Welcome to Okaloosa Today, local news and information. Connecting the communities of Fulton Beach, Destin, and Okaloosa County. Welcome to the Okaloosa Today Show, a one-hour show about Okaloosa County, the city of Destin, and the city of Fort Walton Beach. I'm Kathy Newby, Public Information Officer for Okaloosa County, and we have a great show for you today. I want to welcome our guest, Tammy McDaniel, who is the owner of Tammy's Journeys, and also Kathy Marler Blue from the Destin History and Fishing Museum. And we're going to tell you about all this stuff on the table and have a lot of fun. But let's start with Tammy. And the reason we're here, uh, Tammy has been working on, along with many volunteers such as Kathy, a historical tour that's part of our Viva Florida 500 celebration of our state and its birthday. So tell us a little bit about, kind of give us an overview of the tour you've got planned. Tammy. Sure. Well, I just want to kind of give you a quick history about the catchy phrase, get historical. A few years ago, Sherry Russian, who's the marketing director of the TDC, she put in a grant to visit Florida to create a, a video or a DVD of the history of Okaloosa County, and it was approved. And so this is the DVD that we use at the beginning of our tour at the Emerald Coast Convention Center. And then from then, we'll head over to the Golfarium and Patrick Berry, the uh, uh, director over there will give us a history about the Golfarium. From there we'll head to Destin and we'll get a, a brief history about the uh, Destin Fishing Village from uh, Tracy McGraw who's the uh, marketing director for AJ's. Well and, and let's let's talk about each one of those stops just a little bit. Let's kind of take our, our audience on a tour today and we have these great artifacts to show them as well to get everyone excited but um, the Gulf Air of course has been through a lot of changes. I mean it's it's really um, been renovated a lot. It has a lot of new interactive exhibits and things like that. Um, and um, do you have anything anything in particular you want to say about about that part of the tour before well, we move on to Destin? Uh, I think that Patrick um, overall kind of gives uh, gives us uh, the history that it was the oldest marine park in the in the uh, world as far as and it, it's still a working marine park well and I'm glad you said that because I do want to remind everyone too that um, you're gonna see some photos in this show that um, that I've actually pulled off of Florida memories and there is an old photo of the Gulfarium back how many years ago Timmy oh my goodness uh, you just said it it was what, back in the uh, well, it was 50, 50 58, 50, yeah. 1958. Yeah, something like that. So I wanted. Okay, so if you see some black and white photos, I wanted the audience to know that those are some of those historical photos, and there is one of the of the Gulfarium. So, um, so that'll be really neat, and you can kind of see how it has evolved over the years. So, and then, um, and then you're going to go to Destin. Yes. And see Kathy. That's it. And Marla I'm going to let Blue. Kathy okay. tell us about well, all the exciting we're stuff. We're excited about being a part of this wonderful tour. We have some great exhibits to share with your visitors that we share with everyone that comes in. Two of our newer exhibits in our front exhibit room are two dry aquariums that are about 10 by 10. One of them is a shark. And we've got a Bull shark jaw here, but we uh, sharks are always very interesting to folks. And every fish in our museum, we have over 75 fish mounts, and every fish in our museum was caught out of Destin. So in our shark tank, we have four sharks. Our largest is an eight and a half uh, hammerhead. So that's a very enticing exhibit that a lot of the kids uh, love. Now another one, I have a little little pokey friend here, little porcupine fish. Our newest exhibit in our front exhibit hall is a uh, 10 by 10 exhibit and it's a reef ecosystem recreation. And it was completely completed by our local Bass Pro Store. And there's over, probably over 15 mounts in that reef ecosystem recreation. So you've got to come and see it because the 
hardest ones to find are the baby seahorses and the shrimp and they're pretty hard to find. So those are two of our really big newer exhibits for our front exhibit hall. We have and lots of other things too. very educational for yes. the kids mm -hmm. that come in there. Especially when they can see that ecosystem. Yeah. Well, neat. Well, we do have such a natural area here in our, in our Gulf Coast. Um, all right, and then we're also going to touch on some of the other stops. And, and Yes, uh, um, once we leave Destin, we'll head back to Fort Walton Beach and we'll make a stop at the Heritage Park and uh, Heritage uh, Cultural Center, and that will be made, uh, met by Gail Meyer, and they'll give us a very educational uh, history about uh, Camp Walton and the Indian Temple Mound. And, and I, can I ring this bell, teacher? <laughs> sure. <laughs> This is actually the bell from the from the Camp Walton School, and um, and Gail also gave us some other wonderful artifacts. I mean, I guess this would have been the doll that you would have played with during that time period, and of course, a lot of the stuff from the Indian Temple Mound um, from our our her our Indian heritage here in uh, in not only in Okaloosa but Northwest Florida. So a lot of these great artifacts she brought us uh, to sort of show you and. Of course, there's so much more to see when you go, but uh, some really, really neat items we have um, here and at that museum. It's amazing that uh, the artifacts there date, you know, B.C. It's just I amazing. Know. That's true. Good point. Okay, what else? Well, then from that point on, we'll just point out some different uh, uh, buildings that are have some historical significance on our way to the Air Force Armament Museum, and will be met by George Jones, not the singer, but uh, anyway, he will give us a very uh, deep uh, history about uh, the museum itself and some of the uh, airplanes that set out in front of the museum. Okay, good, 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 good. And then, and then, do you go to Niceville or? No, actually, from there we uh, an important stop. We actually pass out a box lunch, and so. <laughs> Uh, while everyone's eating lunch, we'll head up to Crestview, okay. um, and uh, we'll be met by uh, Cal uh, Seth Meyer. He's part of the Crestview Historical Society, and he does a fabulous job giving us um, in-depth history about the city of Crestview. And we're crossing our fingers this time that we'll be lucky enough to have the mayor, uh, Cadle, um, meet the, the bus like he did last time. Okay. That was well, a treat. Great, and I think we do have some, some pictures of Main Street Crestview, and that's certainly an important part of our history as well up there. But let's let's talk a little bit, Kathy, about the the fishing history in our area. And we'll we'll get into the logging and mm -hmm. we just have so many things that are part of our history, from the Indians to the mm -hmm. logging to the fishing mm -hmm. industry. So many of the people that come into the museum have a misconception that Destin has always had deep sea fishing, and it didn't. It began way, way back. Uh, the current type of fishing did not start until much later. Uh, began, if we go back and it begins with Leonard Destin, uh, we've been an entity since 1835 when Leonard Destin came. We've only been incorporated as a city since 1984. The first hundred years, these folks we call our pioneers of paradise, it was very rustic. There were no roads or bridges till 36, no electricity till 38, no telephone till 52. So the fishing was quite different and they began with boats called seine boats, and they were called seine boats because they utilized a seine net. Very long net, but only about waist high with buoys or floats at the top and weights at the bottom. Well, and they were doing this in Niceville too, except for I guess the difference, was it more fresh water in? I'm not f that familiar with yeah. how Niceville did theirs. Of course, but we have Boggy Bio, yeah. home of the Mullet Festival, yeah. and those the seines were utilized to f catch anything that would school up, primarily That's what's mullet. Important. Yeah, so, so they that used was the, the same big thing. methods. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now they would. An interesting thing is they would. Uh, as they seine these fish up, they would make corrals, pens out in the water, and they would corral the live fish. They'd salt the others, they would take those to market, typically in Pensacola where there was rail and shipping to barter and trade for the things that they needed. 
So that's how the fishing began. And in the museum, as visitors come, they can see the exhibit that shows the evolution from seine boat to the converted seine boat, to the boats we call the head boats or party boats, and of course to the modern uh, char charter boats of today. And even the equipment, I know that I've, you all yes. have some of the equipment that was used at that time too and how it evolved mm -hmm. as well. There's just so much there. Um, and, and of course, you're one of those pioneering families that you were talking about. Uh, there are uh, 15 last name families that were there that came during the first hundred years. Um, I'm fourth generation Marler descendant, and the an interesting uh, little story. Now there are two stories we love to tell folks, and I can share those or get, let that be a teaser for folks to come in. Is one why Destin is called the world's luckiest fishing village. And the other, of course, is how Destin got its name, Destin. And that's actually from a marler, that part. Okay, well, good, good. Well, we'll just sort of leave that out there for now. And, uh, and, and as you can see, Kathy and Jean Melvin put, can put on wonderful tours because they do. They know this. They, their ancestors lived this firsthand. They've been told, told these stories for years, and now they, t they share them with, with all the visitors. And, and you all do a lot of tours, and yes, snowbirds we, um, come in. We have, in fact, last year about 8,700 people come through the museum, through the doors. So that increases each year, and we do get a lot of tours, uh, bus groups, um, children's groups, senior groups, uh, church groups, lots of different groups come in as well as the everyday visitor that's vacationing in our area. Right, right, and there's the Primrose boat outside and a big huge anchor so you, you can't miss it. And that sort of covers uh, the Gulf Coast. Uh, Tammy, you want to talk about uh, some of those early days of farming and logging and I mean, there's farming industry, there was logging, there's our military history, there's our fishing industry. Have we pretty much covered? Yes, I think um, the uh, Air Force uh, Armament Museum uh, gives a, a really good uh, history about, um, and it's, again, that's the only museum of its kind in the world um, that actually dedicates uh, the uh, collection preservation ex uh, exhibition of artifacts and uh, memorabilia associated with the Air Force armament and its uh, platforms of delivery. So I think that, that um, that's a unique, um, just a unique stop uh, that everybody will really get a lot of uh, great information and um, history as well as seeing those air airplanes in, in front of that museum. And uh, George Jones will um, touch base on, on some of the significance of some of those airplanes. Okay, and again, y'all are going to go, uh, what, what's going to happen when you um, go to the Emerald Coast Science Center, Magnolia Grill, Indian Temple Mound, Tringus Theater, Northwest Florida Ballet, Fort Walton Beach Landing, just kind of yeah, touch we, we on just those point, a little bit. We uh, basically just point out uh, the buildings uh, and just, just touch, um, you know, some information about each as we're um, headed to either the Indian Temple Mound or to the... let people know yeah. that, they're, that they're also there. There. Right? I mean, a lot of people so will drive down um, Highway 98 or Miracle Strip Parkway and never know that some of these great sites are, are right, uh, right there, um, right on the road, just on the, the back road of uh, Brook Street. Right, right. Okay. And then, although agriculture uh, did, it did exist throughout the whole county, then y'all are going to go up to Crestview and actually where most of that agriculture is today yes, still. Yes, and um, Cal touches briefly about the history of Baker and Laurel Hill. Yeah, don't forget and that. that. But, the, but you'll get a lot of that information when we stop at the Heritage Museum of Northwest Florida. Oh, okay, good, mm -hmm. good. Did we talk about that? In, uh, no, that but I Niceville think that... Niceville is such an important part. Yeah, and uh, the museum is actually in Valparaiso, and what it really touches is it has like the uh, the humble beginning it's called the humble mullet uh, heritage you know um, and it also touches uh, they, there's they've got a heritage mural there that uh, two women had p painted and that's kind of like the entryway uh, as you go into the museum and it, it reflects the history of our county um, there's also uh, a replica of a Crestview Depot that's very interesting 
And um, one of the things that I think that uh, residents uh, need to know, that if they were born and raised here, they have an opportunity to write about their history and actually put it into that museum. How interesting, I did not know that. Mm -hmm. And another interesting part of this museum is um, is that a lot of people don't know is we received um, every county in, a, in the state of Florida, including Okaloosa, received a time capsule. And you can actually see it on exhibit at the Heritage Museum of Northwest Florida right now. So it is actually on exhibit. So and do you all have lunch there? Or? No, uh, we actually eat our lunch on our way to Crestview. And, uh, but uh, we want to use the time at the museum to see all the sites because uh, we have limited time, a time frame, and um, we want to make sure that everybody has as much time possible to see every, every part of that museum. Absolutely, and so make sure you look for our time capsule yes. while you're there. We are, uh, the committee is working on um, selecting things that will go into that time capsule. So it's not sealed yet, but, uh, but you can actually see it and, and learn a little bit more about it and follow us through the end of the year as we get ready to, to put things <laughs> in there and, and seal it up. All right. Uh, and the Spanish Trail Riders were in part of Crestview. I guess, do y'all talk about those at all? Or? I think Cal touches on it okay. a little bit, you know, Good. on his tour up there. And that's that uh, Spanish uh, Trail is, is a long trail, yes. so that's another important part I want to mention. Yes, and, about um, and that's, uh, I'm glad you mentioned that because um, just want to, these are the teasers that uh, we want people to come on our tour, you know, so they can learn about all this because there's people that had gone on the tour in April that had no idea about uh, some of the history that they learned on that day. So it's really exciting and to, to bring it back again for uh, the residents as well as visitors. And there is a Get Historical flyer that, uh, that Tammy can provide you, and I think we have some information where if you want to be a part of that tour, um, let's talk about that, Tammy. Yes, um, it's, gosh, it's only $20, and it includes lunch. And uh, how can you beat that? And one of the things that we're very, very, very um, humbled and, and thankful about uh, that the museums have uh, allowed us to come in um, at, uh, no cost, and that is, um, we're very grateful about that. However, the people that go on the tour, they're welcome to leave a donation at, at any of the museums because, um, you know, of course, you know, there's a lot of upkeep that um, needs to be done constantly, and so, uh, but uh, the cooperation that we have gotten from all the, the sites that we're stopping at is just amazing, <coughs> and we certainly appreciate um, everything, how we've well, all worked together. Well, yeah, I mean, look at the stuff on this table. I mean, you know, if, if we didn't preserve that, if we don't continue that in the future, then, um, you know, we, w we wouldn't have it. We wouldn't have all this stuff to be sharing with folks today. So, so important to keep our museums going. And, of course, Okaloosa will celebrate 100 years in 1915. So we're, we are already gearing up for mm -hmm. that as well. And, um, but before we go, we have a, few, we have a little bit of time left. And, and I want Kathy to uh, just briefly talk about this sand that she <laughs> brought and, and, of course, the quartz crystals. Mm -hmm. Why don't you share and, and make sure everyone goes on the tour. We have the information on screen to, to get you there. And uh, But before we close, we definitely want to talk about this sand because it's it definitely is one, one of the things I always tell people is that the ingredients to have created the world-class resort we have in Okaloosa County today started many, many thousands of years ago. One of those ingredients is our sand. Our sand is unique in the world. We uh, no, there's white sands all over the world, but none that have the geological history and properties of our sand. The bottom line is it's pulverized quartz eroded over eons of time ago out of the Appalachian Mountains. So when you come to the museum, you will see that history of the sand and how it uh, got here and, and created this beautiful beachfront we have as well as it has to do with the color of the water, so you have to read that to, or come and check that out. So y'all make sure you don't miss this historical tour, and uh, we've already told you about the time capsule and staying, you can visit our Facebook page for that. And up next is going to be Doug Rayner with the City of Destin, and we just wanna thank Cox for the Okaloosa Today Show.